Um, a tough day at the office for us. We um, struggled offensively, which I, I anticipated in, in a lot of ways. They're a really good team, first and foremost. Uh, credit to them. They came in here with a, with a confidence, with an expe expectation, excuse me, uh, of winning. Uh, and they executed their game plan very well for the most part. Um, and they played like an experienced group who had experience winning. I mean, not just guys who played, guys who've won a lot uh, at the college basketball level. Uh, but, you know, it's on me to make our team better. And, you know, my job is to make sure that uh, between now and the next time we play, the things that happened today don't happen again in terms of lack of offensive execution um, and lack of defensive rebounding. Mike Isaac especially seemed to be kind of aggressive early. He said that you, over the course of the week, kind of gave him a message of just clearing his mind and going out and play. Did you see that from him today? Yeah, I mean, we made a conscious effort to try to get him going early. We knew uh, that at his position, he would have a little bit of a size advantage. Uh, so we tried to throw him in there early and get some easy baskets, which he did. Uh, it's, it's a delicate balance um, with when you have young guys because they believe in their abilities. But when they struggle, they start to question things quite naturally. And so we've got, we've got a lot of them. And so I'm trying to get in all their heads at the same time, which is I'm doing like a circus act right now. <laughs> um, but I enjoy this group. i uh, got a group of really good young people who work really hard, who want to win. They just don't know how. They don't know how. And that's not their fault. Um, it's really nobody's fault. But it's my responsibility to get them there. Coach, all that said, you feel better about what you saw today maybe than Wednesday night? You know what? In some ways, yeah. In some ways, no. Um, we had a great opportunity at home to, to win a game against a really good team. So, and, and, you know, it's disappointing to lose. We you know, only scored 53 points uh, and not find a way to get even more good looks. We got some good looks, didn't make them, but to get some more good looks. Now, a lot of that is because of their defense. Um, but in some ways, we did play better. Um, Ice played better. I thought Yor played better. Uh, Cam didn't play very well. Um, and we didn't get a whole lot of production from our bench, which has been a pretty strong point of our team so far. Um, and I've got to go back and look internally of what I'm doing to not be able to help this team uh, perform better. What do you think was the toughest part for them about guarding a team like that that was so good at three-point shooting, especially with Brooks on the court? Um, I, I don't know if there was anything specific other than they can really shoot. <laughs> I mean, you know, Brooks is one of those kids, and I've known him for a long time, recruited him a little bit when I was at Stephen F. Austin. Recruited a lot of those guys. Those guys are good players and um, can really shoot the basketball, and he can shoot them when he's guarded well. I mean, I'll go back and look. I don't know if he – you know, he obviously made a ton of them. I would, I would guess a few of them at least were contested. I mean, and he just rose up and made them. That's what good players do. I mean, I think he'll go make money because of it. Um, and, you know, our charge, charge is uh, to get our guys performing that way and to continue to recruit guys like that too. <laughs> Cam's rough day. What, he, he wasn't in foul trouble today at least, but what kind of do you cite as maybe his reason, the reason behind that? And, you know, Nate's always hard for me without the value of going back and seeing exactly what they did. It seemed to me that their length bothered him. I, I have to go back and look to confirm that. Um, and I think when he didn't get a few early, maybe he started pressing. Um, those would be the two things I would guess. Um, but I'll go back and look at the film and, and be, be able to give you a better answer once I've watched it. But obviously his struggle certainly impacted our ability to have success offensively. Is Kalu another one of those guys you just kind of have to get out of his own head? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the truth is, uh, and, and I'm, I'm very honest and transparent with all my guys, he's just not ready. I mean, <laughs> be honest, he's not ready. And Duncan DeMuth isn't ready, and Contravis Jones isn't ready. And in a lot of ways, neither is your, except we have to play somebody. <laughs> you know, Ice is, and I said this from day one, Ice is the most ready, and he still needs some help, and he needs to develop. But the makeup of our team says those guys got to play for us. And so you learn hard the hard way, and you get exposed a little bit, and hopefully um, not having the success you want not, maybe not playing the minutes you want, motivates you to work harder to figure out quicker what it is to have success at this level. Uh, that's why we rely on our older guys so much. You see it a lot of times when these games are closed, so they maybe start to get tricky. 
Now, I've got a pretty veteran crew out there. Um, and, you know, it's the way it'll be for a while. But, but what the thing I'm encouraged about is I believe in all their abilities. I mean, I don't think it's any question that they're all talented enough. Um, it's a matter of understanding how hard winning is in college. It's hard to win. And, I mean, again, I'm not using this as an excuse at all. I built it. The schedule it doesn't do us any favors. And it doesn't get any easier. Purposely. We're going to play probably the best thing we played so far next Sunday away from home. But I do believe long term what we're trying to do is going to be a benefit to us. What benefit does this week provide you to just kind of – reset might not be the right word, but to kind of reset things? Well, because the, the most important thing we do is educate these kids and, and have them do well in school so that they got a chance at life later on. It's a good time because I need to internally figure out what I'm not doing well. Um, we're obviously struggling offensively, and I've got to make some adjustments. Uh, maybe there's some lineup adjustments to make. Maybe there's a, you know, strategic. But I don't, I don't know what it is. I got to go back and look and figure out. Here are the things we're doing, and we're doing them well. Here are the things that we're doing and not doing well. We need to stop doing those things. <laughs> we need to stop turning the ball over. We did a better job of that tonight. Uh, we still had some untimely ones that that hurt you, uh, and we have to rebound better and. You know, that's what I'll do this week. I'll spend some time obviously recruiting like I always do, but I'll be studying a lot of film and looking at a lot of numbers. Coach Sampson thinks you guys have a bright future and he likes the way that you're playing the schedule you are. What do you think about him saying those things about your program and your team with the coach of his caliber? I appreciate it. You know, he's um He's one of the best in our profession, no question about it. And, and that's what makes it even more challenging because not only are we playing talented teams, we're playing really well-coached teams too. We're going to play a really well-coached team a week from tomorrow <laughs> away from home. And those teams tend to even be able to take more advantage of youth um, because they can pick out guys and figure out how to put them in position that they haven't been in before. Uh, so to hear him compliment our program and our kids in a way maybe he sees us building this thing is encouraging. Uh, it's always easier to compliment somebody after you kick their tail, I would say that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, they've done a good job. You know, that program wasn't very good when he took over. You know, he took over a tough situation. Obviously, being in the city he's in helps, and having his pedigree as a coach, certainly on a professional level, helps with his style of play. But um, I appreciate him saying that. and. You know, we'll, we'll need to not only listen, but figure out, well, what are the things we need to do to take the next step? Coach Sampson got kind of emotional when he was talking about Eddie Sutton after the game. Um, what has it been like for you since you've joined this program, just seeing the impact that Eddie Sutton has had at OSU? Uh, it's really hard to quantify um, as, a, as a younger coach who knew of him but didn't understand really the impact that he had in our profession. Uh, but obviously, when you're here at this school, um, you get a quick uh, education on his importance, his impact, his influence, not only on just the basketball program, right, but the community, um, his players, f former players, his, his, his staffs. Um, and, you know, we're trying to – we're trying to make him proud is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make him, when he comes here, to feel good about what he's seeing this program doing. And then obviously doesn't always turn out in a win, but I hope he leaves here every time feeling good that the program's at least being run the right way. If you could build this schedule again, I know it goes both ways. You have to get there and put as well, but would, would you do anything differently? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, it's easy to say I wouldn't play the schedule again when we're four and five after nine games. But but I, I'll be honest, man, I, I, um, I just want to get better. You know, that's that's my whole goal. I want to be playing better in January and February. And, and again, the, the hardest part for me is that I can't necessarily get my young kids to understand that there are lessons in losing, even though you don't accept it, right? But there are things that you can learn and help you later on. Um, they can't understand that. They don't understand when they're not playing. They don't understand when they're not making shots because they've never faced real adversity like this before. I'm um, sure Contravis Jones has never gone two games in a row and not gotten in, ever. And, you know, so this is all new to those guys. But I hope that while he's watching, he's understanding that he's got some things he needs to do to take ownership of playing more, playing better, being more productive, uh, just like the guys who are playing. And 
as a coach, I sit there and try to figure out how do I get better. Um, so back to answer your question, I think I would approach it the same. Um, I think the only way you get better is playing good people. Um, and I'm not out here trying to fool people. I know this team has challenges. Um, and I could have built a schedule that made us look like we were great and been 9-0. and And then we go to you know, Ames and <laughs> we get our doors blown off and people are like, what happened to that team? No, we have flaws. Uh, and we have youth and, you know, experience and expose those flaws in youth in a way that, you know, you can't really anticipate. But if they don't go through it now, they will at some point. And hopefully going through it now makes them better the next time. Thomas brought up his freshman year when you guys started 0-6 in Big 12 play and how you were able to rebound from that. Do you think there's anything you could pull from that experience? Uh, I had to go back and look. Yeah, the teams are so different. Um, it's hard to say for sure on, on that. Um, I do know we have the type of people who can respond, though. Uh, so that's what I'm encouraged about is we have the right kind of kids. I don't have any worries that tonight somebody's going to go off and, and um, you know, start talking bad about his teammates or, you know, pick a – you know, we don't have the type of kids that all of a sudden are going to start pointing fingers. Uh, we, we look in the mirror and, and we own our part of whatever we're struggling with and then we try to help each other be better. Anything else, guys? Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Have a great week. Student athletes, Isaac Likely and Thomas DeZagla. Go ahead, guys. Isaac, you seem to be really aggressive, especially early. Was that just part of the plan for you coming into this game? Uh, it was really, it wasn't just necessarily the plan. It was just how the flow of things went. And lately, Coach Boyd has been talking to me about, you know, just clear mind to play with more confidence and just getting to play how I know how to play. So I just came in aggressive and the opportunities was there. I feel like a night like this can help you do that a little more consistently? Yes, sir, no doubt. I just feel like, you know, I'm never going to force anything, but whenever the opportunities come, I'm going to take advantage of them. Thomas, in a game like this where you guys are going up against an undefeated team, what's uh, Coach Boyne's message heading into this one and as you guys are now kind of just floating around that 500 mark? Um, the message was mostly just worry about us, to be honest. Um, we knew they were undefeated. We knew our current situation, but going into every game, we try to personally get better. We don't really worry about the other team. We kind of uh, try to get better with ourselves, with making free throws and limiting turnovers for us and uh, just trying to get better for ourselves. And we, I mean, obviously you game plan and everything, but we're really just concerned with ourselves right now. And with every other game, we're always concerned with ourselves. What could this next week then do for you guys as you kind of try to take an inward look? Uh, it would be, be great. Uh, finals week is coming up. So coach was preaching first and foremost for student athletes. So finals week, uh, a lot of studying and everything. But um, I think we have like seven days or eight days prepared for this next uh, game. So um, there will be a lot of practices um, towards us. Not a lot of scout. We have a lot of practices leading up. So um, be a lot of practices that we could just focus on ourselves and uh, try to correct things, go back to the drawing board. Was it weird to be away from this arena for so long? <laughs> I wouldn't say weird, but there's no better place than Stillwater, Oklahoma. Uh, there's no better arena in the country than uh, GIA. Tom, so what's the difficulty of def defending a team that shoots the three as much as they do and, and as well as they do? Um, uh, the three-pointer has opened up the floor tremendously, um, as you guys uh, can see in how the game is played nowadays with NBA and college, uh, teams who can really shoot the ball are really tough to defend. Um, <clears throat> so credit to Houston, they were making tough shots and they were making a lot of shots. So um, it's just it's just tough to defend. Uh, spacing the floor and then drives become easier uh, and then get into rotations and then threes become uh, just contagious. Uh, making shots is uh, contagious. And that's what it was for them tonight. But did they shoot? Isaac, how challenging things. has the schedule been for you guys, the level of competition you've been playing? It's definitely been challenging. Uh, you know, Coach Boyden gave us the statistic the other day that we have the 37th hardest schedule in the country. And, you know, it's really just building us good as a team. You know, you go through ups and downs, but, you know, we have a bunch of great character guys in the locker room and on the team and on the staff. So, you know, just going through this little rough patch would be nothing. I believe that we'll bounce back easily. Well, not easily, but definitely we'll bounce back. And it's just building us good as a team.
Thomas, from your perspective, you guys haven't ever started a season like this since you've been here. Just what's maybe different about this year, and how do you guys build from here? Um, uh, nobody in that locker room came to Oklahoma State to play easy games. Uh, this is an elite program, and we're going to play elite teams. Um, right now, we're in a rough patch, but my freshman year, we started off Big 12 0 and 6, and we bounced back uh, really well. So um, I'm not really concerned on our, our record right now. Uh, we just got to get better every single day, and we're on the verge of, of overcoming this hump. Isaac, Nathan asked you about being aggressive, driving. Did you get to a point during the game where you, you were even more comfortable with driving? And then also, after a while, you started spotting up shooters and kicking the ball back out. Was there a, more of a comfort level for you? Um, it wasn't necessarily just a comfort level. You know, that's how I play. Just That's my playing style, just as me being me. It's just that tonight I played more with a clear mind, I want to say. You know, Coach Boyden preached to us this whole week. He's seen a lot of stuff was on in our minds individually. And so today I just went in there freely and just, you know, played how Isaac plays. And I just went in there and made plays for myself and my teammates. And, you know, we came on the short end, but I definitely look to build on this and just become better every day in practice and just continue to work hard. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.